This is your evolution on the Sunday Revolution. It's 12 minutes past 12 o'clock. Welcome to the Sunday Revolution. That's Huma Seka and Sarafina. Starting off the second hour, DJ Spoo and Remember When It Rained. On the way, some tense Jordan and Brenda Fassi. All right, uh, uh, man, like, I, I don't even know uh, where to start introducing my next guest, but it, this for real is podcasting royalty in studio, <laughs> Gavin Kennedy from Solid Gold Podcasts, uh, the importance of why. Uh, he is here and he's the right person to speak to because he's produced, is it thousands of podcasts yeah. for hundreds of podcasters? Yeah, that's right. Are you, are you exhausted? <laughs> just, just to kind of start that off. Uh, only getting started. <laughs> <laughs> are you joking? Oh, my word. You've been in, obviously, broadcasting since the 1990s. You've gravitated through so many stations as well, like Mix and Buan East Wave. You've also worked for uh, clients with Sir Kinnicor, Edcon, Harmony Gold. Your, obviously, your, your resume is humongous. And again, just thanks again for being here uh, with us today to chat about uh, maybe the I can say well I call it the the podcast solution question mark right right it is now would you say it's a trusted the trusted platform of maybe the new century or decade or whatever it is wow go deep immediately as you start off yeah <laughs> trust yeah. trust is the the currency yeah yeah uh, pod- is it I mean like a, a yes or no. The word podcast originally had a technical meaning. I mean, yeah. if you go back in time, do you know what podcasts were called before they were called podcasts? Um, sound bites. <laughs> Audio <laughs> blogs. Okay, all right. So that gives you some insight into what people were thinking when they created them. They go, yeah. okay, I'm writing my blog. I want people to listen to my blog. Yeah. So that's it. That's where it started 20 plus years ago. It did. Hey, that's the thing. People don't notice that it's been around forever Yeah. Uh, because it is sold as maybe a new age platform, but it's just basically obviously the consumer culture has made it commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So it had a technical definition. It yeah. was an, an audio file delivered via the internet using an RSS feed. That mm. used to be the definition of what a podcast is. And when people tell their stories, again, it comes across you. You are the, well, I mean, a part of that process line, right? Uh, do you feel that there's, uh, there's a sense of responsibility that's kind of being abdicated from? Because the thing is that the platform allows for that. We want a lot of opinion. We want a lot of like individuality, that type of thing. By its very nature, it's, it's breaking down the the vertical uh, control of media. Mm. That's its pretty much its purpose. So that's what it, that it achieved better than anything is this inability for you to turn it off at a single point. Mm. Um, it's not a YouTube channel that you three strikes and I've turned off your channel. Uh, if you upset somebody and they cancel your hosting, you can host it yourself. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that actually leads me directly to my next question with Frank's speech, right? You obviously heard about it, right? So this is a sidebar. There's the way that I can kind of like sum it up is is this dude is the pillow king or whatever of America, right? Uh, Him along with a lot of activists, whatever it may be, that were thrown off social media, decided for him himself to create this now Frank's speech platform that hosts over 200 podcasters right now and really starts to, like they've really mended the way for not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna call it fake news or false news it's just so it it is so opinionated right so deeply opinionated and when you are consuming podcast of the podcaster of the podcaster of podcaster then it obviously builds this perception of reality (laughs) that isn't really true you know so when we bring it back and we don't want to talk about that because that's obviously just a fact and that's where it is and you can actually go find them and listen for yourself but when you are looking at podcasts that are considered quality podcasts what's the criteria so that people actually know when i'm listening to something it's something that i should be spending my time with let's not talk about a podcast let's talk about a library okay. instead as a as a, as a, a metaphor mm. if i walk into a library what's a good book mm. Well, it depends. Am I looking for entertainment or am I looking for knowledge? Mm -hmm. Am I looking for science? Am I looking for humor? You can't go into library and say the definition of a good book is X. I suppose the definition would be a book that gives me what I'm looking for. What's the definition of a good podcast? If I'm looking to be entertained, a good podcast is (laughs) one that entertains me. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking for knowledge, it doesn't have to entertain me. I don't want to read a scientific paper. I want to listen to the person who wrote the paper and learn from them. 
that's a good podcast. But the thing is that within, obviously, the social spectrum of that that space, there isn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, there isn't accountability. If you want to listen to me, go ahead and do whatever it is and think whatever it is. As anyway, a lot of digital creators will say, you know. So, uh, yes, you, so you're, you're right. We, yeah, you're right. right. It, it's a very democratized medium. Mm. So the question is, do you feel better being in a world where you you have to think for yourself whether Frank Space is good, bad, or indifferent versus? Yeah. Being in a country like South Africa, where before the mid nineties mm. only the state was allowed to broadcast. No, oh, okay. I mean, like, that's <laughs> which, do you feel, which world do you feel more comfortable in? No, I get that. <laughs> I see that. But the thing is that we have access to the international standards or whatever it is, or the, what what we're drawn to. There are so many. I mean, endless amounts. What, what is the stat now? The last uh, in the beginning, four point two million uh, unique podcasts. Yeah. Channels. I mean, that's just crazy enough as it is. I get that 90% of them are not great, just in general. Oh, more. More than 90%. Okay. Much more. What qualifies as a great podcast? Does it deliver on what it said it's going to do? And, and, and a vast majority of them don't say what they're trying to do. They're just, yeah. you know, uh, three people talking, you know, rubbish around the table. <laughs> <laughs> it should almost be a genre, you know. Hey, yeah. welcome to my podcast. We're not a comedy. We're not a true crime. We're a three guys talking rubbish. Yeah. You know? Oof. Um, it's exhausting. Anything that occurs naturally mm. distributes no- normatively. Okay. So you've heard of bell curves. Mm-hmm. You give 100 people a test and you draw a graph of how the results are and 15% fail and 15% get a distinction and there's this big bulge in the middle. Yeah. When it comes to anything that's creative, it doesn't do that. Mm. You get a very, very small percentage dominating where the, the revenue and the attention is. Yeah. So we might have four... Point two million podcasts in the world, yeah. But there's probably only a thousand that are influential and profitable, right? So it's a very, very, very small percentage, and then you've got this long tail of, yeah, nearly you know four point two million, yeah, that have one episode or three episodes yeah. or five episodes and don't sell any advertising yeah. and, and have no revenue and no following. And we're going to talk about monetization and longevity because that those are two things that are extremely scarce and also I think misinterpreted within the podcasting realm. Gavin Kennedy here from Solid Gold Podcast chatting to us about the podcast solution on 909. That is Freddie Guala on 909. Let's talk about the, the pragmatics of producing your own podcast and dedicating yourself. And there's a number of podcasts, endless amounts of podcasts that kind of just disappear after a certain amount of episodes, predominantly because of the effort that is required to one obviously produce it well well, i mean prep it present it produce it and post produce it you know in some other way you were saying that it's basically a call of passion (laughs) (laughs) Uh, people give up on things when they don't get any reward from it so if you're making a podcast and you're just not feeling like you're moving the direction you wanted to then you're just going to stop doing it but what counts as reward? Uh, it depends. It really depends. It can be different things. So for some people, podcasting is a hobby. Mm. The only metric of success for that podcast is, am I having fun? Yeah. I might expand it to be, am I having fun and meeting cool people? Okay. Am I having fun meeting cool people and getting better at overcoming my shyness and interviewing people? A year down the line, Chris, how's your podcast going? Are you having fun? Yeah. You're mm-hmm. meeting cool people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're getting better at interviewing. Yeah. Success. Mm-hmm. I bet you energized and loving it. That's not the same as I'm paying all my bills from it. Some people buy bicycles for 100,000 rand with no intention of winning a race for prize money. Okay. Okay. So you sometimes are happy to spend money on something you enjoy doing. Podcasting can be that. Yeah. Trouble brews when you think that's going to automatically grow into a business and you're going to make a living off it. Hmm. It's not. Yeah. Well, that's my thing is how does one... I say navigate through or even, I don't know, morph through to that area because <laughs> that's really what it is. A lot of podcasters don't see money at all and monetization is always sold as a plus. Oh, you can monetize it. You can monetize it. You can monetize well, it. Let's go back. You buy this bicycle because mm-hmm. you enjoy it. It's a nice bike. You've had your eye on it. It's lovely. It's comfortable. If you're entering races and hoping mm. that a sponsor is going to come along and say, hey, I like you and your bike. Here's some money. That's unrealistic. It's not. Yeah. So if you're thinking, I'd like somebody to sponsor my cycling, mm. you need to do things differently. You don't just go riding for fun. You need to achieve something. You need to win a race. You need to be on television. Th- th- you have to do things differently. So you can't 
do the hobby thing and hope mm. that an advertiser comes along. And in the same way, you can't ride a bicycle and hope you're going to make this, you know, the, the, the Olympic team. They're, they're different strategies, and you're going to do things differently. Mm. So, so what is step one, two, and three? <laughs> know whether it's a hobby or it's a business. Okay. If you know it's a business, mm. then you've got to understand what kind of business it is. Mm-hmm. Broadly speaking, I mean, I'm going to be a bit simplistic. There are two kinds of podcasts. Please do, yeah. Podcast one, yeah. your audience is your product. I'm building a following so that every week 10,000 people listen and I can go to Coca-Cola and say, give me money to talk to the 10,000 people. Okay. The audience is my product. Sure. The second kind is the audience is your customer. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get a tribe of people to follow me, to know me, to like me, to trust me, mm. and do business with me in my real day-to-day business that pays the bills. Do you, when you are dealing with a client, I mean, do you guide them in this process of like quality assurance and stuff and stuff and stuff? It's essential that people don't notice the quality. They, you know, it should be transparent to you. Okay, oh, Your audience it. would only notice the quality of this broadcast if it was bad. Yeah. Otherwise, they take for granted mm-hmm. it should be the same volume, it should be clear, yeah. and, and so on. Sure. It's, it's in the absence of quality that quality becomes important. Mm-hmm. It's a given. Is it more important to have a good story? If I'm sitting at the airport mm-hmm. and Warren Buffett walks past and I get this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to stick a microphone in his face and ask some questions yeah. and the quality is bad, yeah. But it's the only version of that conversation that exists. Right. People will accept that conversation. That's what I find, yeah. But if I book him, say, mm-hmm. please, can you come see me next Tuesday? I'm going to record. There's no excuse for that not to be good. Yeah, for sure. So <laughs> if, if it's premeditated and planned, quality should, should be good. Gavin Kennedy in studio with us from Solid Gold Podcasts for the next half hour or so chatting to us about the podcast Evolution Revolution Solution. Right, if you've just joined us or well, welcome to the chat, the podcast solution question mark chat with Solid Gold Podcaster. Head, you're obviously <laughs> head in charge. No, like, I mean, like, you, you obviously I mean, you run that company. Yeah, it's, it's a business your I company, started. Right? Yeah, yeah, family business. Me and my children. The family business is doing really well. It's your, it's everyone's go-to. I think as a, and I can say that quite safely, they go to find some quality in terms of production. Your studios are great. Again, your quality assurance, as Thank we you. discussed Thank before, you. is great. And obviously, your buy into the podcasting realm is far. I mean, it's it's advanced. <laughs> Yeah. Anybody okay. can start a podcast. That's one of the best things about podcasting is the barrier to entry is so low that anybody can start a <laughs> podcast. So one of the worst things about podcasting is that the barrier to entry is so low that anyone can start a podcast. Mm. You know, that, that's a double-edged sword that it's so easy that anybody can make one. And that doesn't necessarily encourage every one of them in good content. Okay. All right. Okay. Why the absence of people's support for tradi- traditional media now? I grew up in an era where we only had the state broadcaster in South Africa. You had no choice. You know, we pretended there were some other stations, but they were all still controlled by the SABC, which was a government mouthpiece. Sure. The attraction of an alternative voice is always strong. In those days, then Capital Radio started down in uh, the Trans Sky, Mm. and 702 started in Putitswana, and we used to get LM Radio from, from Mozambique. Yeah. I guess it's a lot like East Berlin, West Berlin. Um, if you're in the area where you're constrained and you're looking over the wall and you're seeing other people, uh, there's an attraction. So maybe uh, maybe it's that. Do you feel, and this, and don't lie now, please, because the <laughs> no, thing is I've been lying that, up until now. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because when we go and consume stuff online, digitally, right, we don't have the patience, nor the tolerance, nor the capacity for, as you've been saying, critical thinking to choose one thing over another as being a sound source for me to make my own mind up so where does that like we say that power in in these mediums come from in controlling again there's no no follow-through from the consumer oh who's who's controlling podcasting Uh, nobody (laughs) that's cool (laughs) is that a good thing Uh, who controls what you read who controls what you're able to write who controls what you're able to say? I'm not saying we're in a world where you can't. You know, certain things you genuinely yeah, yeah. shouldn't say. But we know that's a difficult. We know that's a difficult conversation to have. Elon Musk and X are going through that exact thing. We're saying freedom of speech, and 
different people advocate for different lines at which that freedom should be constrained. Okay, that, so that, that's a really, really complex and, and big discussion. Here's a better way maybe to clear that up. So which podcasts, just for example, any examples that make sense, do you feel have been irresponsible in terms of like a really like genuinely like <laughs> force feeding something dangerous, something uh, too uh, you're, not, you're, you're not even going to be able to get me one out of me. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't think of one, but <laughs> what, what I can tell you is that even if they are absolute garbage spewing, made up rubbish, mm. I, <laughs> I do believe that you can't keep doing that for a long time and sustain it. You know, okay. you might get it, you might do it for a little while, but you can't, you can't fool all the people all the time. Yeah. Really? No, you can't. really. Yeah, I don't think you can. Again, everyone always says, "Then let's bring up America as you, an you, example." You can, you can try and fool all the people all the time if you have a monopoly on the information. Okay. But the minute you can have dissenting or arguing or conflicting opinions and, and have access to them without constraint, I don't have to use a VPN to find podcasts that have a different view. They're fair easily enough. available. Yeah. Fair um, enough. Then it's up to me to use critical thinking and discerning thought and look at it and say, is this true? Do they have a motive? Do they? Uh, where would you go? Where would you tell a listener right now would be maybe some, some good places, good portals, good, good platforms to go and listen to podcasts that are great and great for uh, quality in their life or whatever it is, something to enrich their lives. So there's different reasons that you would want to listen to a podcast. Sometimes mm. it's habitual. I'm stuck in the car for 45 minutes True. and I just want to listen to something entertaining. Cool. Uh, are you looking for news? Are you looking for updates of what's happening in the world? Then mm -hmm. find some newsy, local, international. Yeah. You might go, I just want to laugh. Do you like American humor, British humor? British humor, go to the BBC. They've got four, or 500 podcasts yeah. there. There's plenty good stuff there to listen to. Yeah. That's 30 minutes long. That matches your commute. How about in South Africa? We're struggling for people to be clear on why they're doing stuff mm -hmm. so not just South Africa anywhere in the world they're struggling to, to be clear on I'm making this podcast because uh, I'm a comedian I'm making this because I want people to buy tickets to my next show at Monte Casino okay That's which it. is fair yeah 100% yeah. I'm teasing you with content so that you know me like me trust me and, and know what kind of comedy you're going to get and buy a ticket to come to my show okay it's not the same as well I hope thousands of people listen and I can sell adverts around my show um, mm. Different monetization strategy. Yeah. Some people uh, listen to deep, meaningful conversations around marketing strategy, psychology, self improvement, um, politics. Okay, all what's been content. overdone and it's been overdone terribly? It, it's overdone if you don't like it, but it's no, underdone, I'm asking, <laughs> what, it's what underdone it for anybody who wants to listen to more. You know? <laughs> Okay, okay, final question. Listen, thank you so much for just joining us. And uh, again, if you want to just go find out what uh, Gavin and his crew, daughter included, right, uh, do offer, please go and follow them online, Solid Gold Podcasts all over, right? Where do you think podcasts should go? Because it is quite stagnant at the moment. No, it's far from stagnant. Uh, podcasts no. are growing. Podcasts are growing about 20% year on year for the last 15 years. Growth is different. Format and quality and something new, like a fresh... Okay. Something. If we go back 110, 120 years, okay. the motor car had just been invented. Uh -huh. And for the first while, all the cars looked like horse-drawn carriages with the horses missing. Okay. Because that's pretty much what they were. We had this thing and we replaced <laughs> the horse with an engine. Yeah. For the first while, and maybe we're coming out of it now, podcasts yeah. look a lot like radio because it mm -hmm. was most like the thing it grew out of. Yeah. So it's mostly radio people who are making podcasts, and it's mostly TV people who are making because that's where it came from. Sure. But after a while, car makers said, well, we don't have to put the engine at the back. We could put it in the front. We could put it in the middle. We don't have to have it. We can change it based on this new thing. It doesn't have to be the old. Mm -hmm. Podcasting is, is in that phase now where we go, well, it doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It doesn't have to yeah. be in 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be interview format. It doesn't have to be every Tuesday. Mm. What's the purpose of it and how can I use it? And it becomes more of what's the message I'm trying to deliver to who, how. There's a podcast that is seconds long. They just say a word every day. But that's rubbish. <laughs> no, but that's They're, not, that's but it's, garbage. But it's, it's, it's experimenting. It's no different <laughs> from, let's try a three-wheeled vehicle or a five-wheeled vehicle or a six. It, there's going to be a lot of experimentation. We're seeing. But that confuses the community because, again, we need kind of some. Look, the one thing that podcasts don't have is a standard. They don't. You can't actually <laughs> say, one, it should be like this, or two, it should be like this because 
again, these kind of boundaries keep on 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 being yeah, split within, within a domain. Yeah. Within a domain, you'll have guidance. You know, if you if you're trying to sell advertising, yeah. then there's an optimal length. Okay. Uh, it should be this long to that long. Ad breaks should be this far apart. Um, ad, ad breaks shouldn't have more than three. Ad- well, there's, there's some yeah. guidelines for that kind yeah. of podcast. Yeah. But when it comes to deep dive knowledge. There's podcasts out there that are six, seven, eight hours long per episode. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But they're deep that's dives a on a day. topic. Yeah, yeah. But that's whole day. Yeah. For a person who's interested in that topic, <laughs> it's not long oh, enough. Give, give me more of those. <laughs> all Lord of the Rings together. One, two, three. That's all of them together. Okay. All right. Okay. So what would you love for the, in the next podcast you would like to listen to? And then we'll end it at that. I am a fan of Dan Carling's Hardcore History. Okay. I wish I'd discovered him when I was at school. I would have taken history as a subject instead of what I did. It just he makes geography. He, yeah, <laughs> would work. <laughs> yeah. Um, he just makes it so engaging and entertaining. I want to start here, but before I do, I just need to go back a little bit and give you some context. And and before you understand that context, yeah. I need to go back a bit. Nice. And he just takes you on this journey and proves Black that hole. history has no beginning. You know, you always start in the middle of a story and he's just a great storyteller. Thanks, Gavin, for being with us and sharing some, some knowledge and some time right here on 909. Uh, you can catch both me and Gavin this Sunday, coming Sunday at Comic-Con Africa, chatting further about the brand identity connection to your own part in vodcasting. <laughs> Thanks, Gavin. This is 909. Whether you're on the M1, M3, or R55, we'll play songs to make you feel good on 919.